Well, let me, um, let me read to you. Oh, this is going to be lost on you non-Trekkies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a lot of, of, not a lot of work. I'm not going to say it's work, but I, I went through the trouble of translating some of his writings into Klingon and then mm. retranslating them back into English using some online tools. Mm, wow. um, maybe I could just give you how David Myatt sounds in English through Klingon. So you can get a sense of like yeah, the underlying soul of this. We, we can break it down this way to its okay. essence, you know. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what is this? This is the war song of Kalinos. This is a song that he translated from Greek. Mm -hmm. he, he, this is his own translation that I then translated into Klingon. That I then translated into English. Mm -hmm. um, and he does not wish to stand upon the music given Kales and music. It was a visit to the time air. At least it begins within the building. If you can do it to ignore you, when the battle is composed of battle. If there are wars, now for him in tonight there is. Form of the form of the food that makes them well know. For many years, his hands removed his hands and settled in your eyes. And so their marriage is not the rest. The leaders have also triggered a buffalo dog with the leaders of the buffalo dog. And if it comes to the sea, the Tao of easy Tao becomes easy to silent for a modesty of joy. Better. Yeah, so I can translate shit too. Round of applause there for uh, David Myatt <laughs> yeah. and Klingon. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's not that much different in, in his translation. <laughs> So, Boris, what is this show called and what's it about? It's called The Empire Never Ended. And what do we do? <laughs> yeah, Ray, what do we do? We look at the freaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like the freaks. We like the freaks. We have our uh, a favorite that we've already started talking about here. We gave you the sort of structural, grand historical background to our golden boy, the Numinous One. Uh, the, the general Martok of the Aryan race, the... This is the, uh, the David Myatt, the one and only. Maybe stop or don't, I don't know. Uh, we don't do the, like, we don't introduce ourselves. A lot of podcasts do that. Oh, well, it's, it's, uh, podcasts do do that, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> by way of introduction... Yeah, who... but they usually do that with their actual names, which we're not doing. Well, still, we have uh, our own personas. What's we'll... your persona? I'm Ray. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm like a... I would say part thief, part bard class. I'm a, I have a, like, I'm a, like a Balkan uh, mysterious person. You're a Balkan mysterious person. Mm -hmm. uh, Boris, you're like a, you like, you lived on the mean streets. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you speak the language, of, <laughs> you speak the language of darkness. Yeah, I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the only guy here who uh, doesn't even ironically Enjoy listening to Screwdriver. Yeah. yeah Nobody actually... Uh, <laughs> I said ironically. When I... Uh, I've heard it. When I said, like, introduce myself, I only thought, like, saying, like, I'm free, Boris and Ray are here today. Right. Something like this. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. All right. Uh, I'm Fritz. <laughs> Boris and Ray are here uh, from The Empire Never Ended, which is a podcast about uh, all this fucking shit that we talk about uh, yeah like what man that, that, that intro sucks <laughs> yeah, what the like, fuck yeah. is that well what the do you want to talk about that shit? look here's what i think look we're here to talk about, about we're here to talk about the left hand path and not and not the album by swedish we're not talking about that right now though we're talking about the galactic <laughs> imperium today so okay so listen what is this podcast about it's about stuff like the left hand path and the galactic imperium it's about Nazi Satanists. It's about Nazi Satanists. It's about like numinous golden boys who are finding their way along with the rest of us through this crazy world by blood sacrifice and uh, 
you know, just whipping themselves often. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what this well, show's about. Maybe. Maybe, maybe well, it's we not. we could just start by saying, okay, so last episode <laughs> we did uh, David Myatt, uh, yeah. the bizarre Nazi. Yeah. Uh, and now, te te theoretician of terrorism. Yeah. Just an interesting, like, thing weird. Uh, we just presented David Myatt, the terrorist guy. We haven't presented the bizarre David Myatt. Yes, yet. exactly. That's what we're doing. So now we're going to talk about his bizarre side. Yeah. Like right. the side that okay. Nazis who like terrorism think is his bizarre side. Yeah. And that is what this show is about. Hmm. This episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's talk about um, David Myatt. Uh, we mentioned him last mostly in context of sort of the British neo-Nazi scene, uh, some possible state connections there. But what is this man actually advocating? Uh, what is his sort of grand contribution to the neo-Nazi world? What do you think of, guys, when you think of David Myatt first? Besides his cuddly demeanor. Order of Nine Angles. Order of Nine Angles, all right. We got some saying. What do you think about first when I say David Myatt? You think Order of Nine Angles? Mm. No, I think just uh, like kind of a very bizarre sad person, totally obsessed by like of, uh, himself, okay. writing, having 20 web pages about himself, pretending to be other people, writing about himself citing himself under different names, writing a huge Wikipedia article about himself. He's, he's a prophet of the internet. And, and in, a, in a fitting way, uh, when I think about him, I think about him as like a, a, like a Star Trek nerd before we had like AOL chats to talk about it with other real nerds. And what do you do just with all that bottled up, you know, you, you heard about the Klingon Empire and the Galactic Federation of Planets, and you come up with this... Uh, kind of fan fiction that uh, you call the Galactic Imperium, and I want to talk about that a little bit with you guys. Uh, this yeah. is not But you pretend to take it very, very seriously. I mean, he, he, I think he does take seriously, it seriously. But the Galactic is serious. Imperium is the real deal, man. It's, it's yeah. Funny. It's a perfect, it makes perfect sense because, you know, he's a man who sees the Aryan nation and Aryan nationalism as a Faustian spirit, uh, a scientific sort of soul that, like, propels the race uh, to greatness, uh, to great art, to great music. Um, and, uh, and it's just been poisoned by this completely non-scientific um, Magian, which is his fun word for Jewish uh, fake sciences, like physics and anthropology and <laughs> astronomy and all that stuff. Like he doesn't need any of that. Aryan, this is important to know about Aryan people in general, is that Aryan knowledge comes out of the soul. Um, it comes out of their connection to the land. I, I'd like to read uh, just a, a little passage here that he wrote in, um, what is this actually? This is in Vindex. This is the destiny of the West. This is, for me, my favorite of his, of his non-Satanic writings. Um, this is good old-fashioned Nazi sci-fi. Uh, so, so this is just, this is him writing in Vindex about, uh, how, how do true Aryans develop their greatness and how do we move towards the Galactic Imperium? And, uh, he, he uses National Socialism as an example. Uh, basically, Hitler is just, he, he's Mayat's Jesus. He's, uh, he's one of the original Vindex types. Vindex being this figure that will come and avenge, uh, supposedly the, the white genocide, I guess, um, and uh, lead us through this heroic, again, Faustian spirit of breaking boundaries and blah, 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 up to, up to space. So how do we get there without books? Well, it sounds contradictory, but it's not. And listen, National Socialism under the numinous leadership of Adolf Hitler was an attempt to restore within the body of the state values of heroism and individuality and Hellenic civilization. Okay, but listen, this is what it was. It was the triumph of spirit over intelligence. Do you see? So you don't have to know this has to make sense. Wait, Myatt says that. M Myatt says that. I took credit for it, but it really was Myatt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Myatt, none of this really, he doesn't even want you to make sense of this. Don't use your brain. Stop yeah. it. Just stop thinking right now. The spirit. The spirit is what we want here. And uh, yeah, it's a, the spirit is a healthy body, you know, it's a noble attitude. Intelligence, he says, resides in clever books and the people who make them, their occupation. Uh, and this is why National Socialists burned undesirable books. They didn't need them. 
just as the Romans before them had no need of the sophistication of Platonic philosophy. The National Socialists enjoyed life, not ideas and books. You don't get to space with books, you know? You use, I don't know. Horses? You, you, whatever the ground tells you to use, you just use that. Like, whatever the forest tells you. And uh, one of the things the forest tells Myatt to tell us is that he makes a special point out of getting the space, this guy. I, mean, I hope we're not jumping around too much, but I think just as far as understanding the sacrifices that we're all going to have to make to get there, um, we, he specifies that we're going to have to stop believing the Holocaust happened in order to get to space. <laughs> we're, we're not going to form a galactic empire. I'm not being hyperbolic here. This is something that he's really serious about. Uh, mm -hmm. We can't form this empire if we still think that this, mm -hmm. this myth yeah. that... Uh, because the, 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 the Holocaust is there to fill Aryans right. with a sense of guilt sense and thus guilt. hold them exactly. back exactly. from their true spiritual potential. Right. And so there's no, how are you supposed to start your Mars colony, Mr. Musk, if you still feel guilty about shit? You know, and I think mm -hmm. in our day, uh, I think he's our Vindex. But mm -hmm. Maybe that's for a later episode. Uh, so Vindex, so who is this Vindex in real life, though? Like, the name doesn't. I think he, 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 we were wondering if the Windex uh, spray bottles were out in the UK at this time and he just saw it in a store drunk or where this name comes from because like it's not, it's tied to this Roman, uh, what is he, a general? Um, some Wasn't Roman he an anti-Roman? Like... No, it was a Gallic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's Gallic nobility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he Gallic. fought against Roman. He's Gallic nobility, exactly. Yeah. Which is, yeah, which is one of the funny contradictions later in, there, in this whole worldview of yeah. trying to be both... Uh, uh, an imperial civilization coming off of Hellenic principles and also being one of the Gauls that fought to destroy that very civilization yeah. at the same time. Uh, this guy, you, uh, I don't know, not important. Mm. I think even even my later on, yeah, he criticizes he criticizes, he criticizes the decision to use yeah. Vindex in a letter to himself published under a pseudonym. Yeah, right, right. When, yeah. He's, when he's pretending to be somebody else reading his own work and criticizing himself. Something we should really tell the audience that happens all the time. Like, almost all the time. everything written about Mayat, Mayat wrote. Yeah, if you find, uh, find some, like, um, uh, a series of, like, 20 different websites <laughs> calling yes. themselves regarding David Mayat, about yeah. David Mayat. Yeah, or which, whatever, the numinous path. Yeah, or... with text signs under different names, all taking David Mayat super, super seriously. Yes. Like he's the most important person ever. Yeah. Uh, that's probably written by David Meyer. Yeah, the exception being this podcast. Yes. None of us, <laughs> as of yet, are David Meyer. Mm. Uh, yes. So, so let's back up a little bit. Yeah, okay, what is right. Vindex? So, okay, so Vindex is this event. You said it a couple times, but we need, we need to... It's hard to... It, it, Vindex doesn't mean shit. It's, it's this... Vindex is like the Jesus coming back moment, and that's what it is. It could be anybody... It could be a man, it could be a woman. He has a special name for it. I think Ventress, I want to say, is the name for the, the, the Lady Vindex, um, which uh, he's open to because, you know, he's, he's into gender equality. Mm. So, essentially, what, what this is, what Mayat is, is a really well-read dumbass, essentially. Mm. And one of the things that he, he does is uh, he borrows, like, the first half of books and then kind of forgets to read the second half sometimes. And one of these is in how he develops like a historical background to justifying this claim that within, within the Aryan race is this natural drive to space. And that's just the destiny of the West, which is the title of the book. And one of them he loves is this historian. He, I mean, like, whatever. Quintessential historian um, Arnold Toynbee, uh, who wrote for many decades and was... Um, essentially a celebrity historian for most of his life. Uh, and one of this is just that, uh, that civilizations each have their own morphologies, and, and you see the morphology of a civilization inside its creative minority, meaning that civilizations are things which have a creative class that kind of stands above or outside. And, um, but, but Toyn, and so Mike likes this. He says, like, okay, so this is how we identify who is naturally a part of which civilization? Because he's not like against the idea of black people, for instance, having their own civilization. He's fine with that. That's okay. It's just like, uh, how do we know that there is a difference? And so his is, he uses Tombi this way, but Tombi is also like a universal humanist. Like he, he just ignores all of that. None of that matters. He really likes this Spangler who will come up a lot probably. Um, maybe not even today, but 
on and on, who was a, um, a Prussian socialist, a kind of a predecessor, I suppose. Member of a Nazi party. Uh, yeah, but he was also a, a, a kind of internal critique of yeah. Nazis. He was a part of what some fascists like to call the conservative revolution. Yeah. Which means like fancy pants Nazi. Yes, he was a fancy pants Nazi. That's yeah. what he was. When that's why he also, like, when he criticizes the, the Nazi Nazis, he, he talks about them being a little, uh, he implies that they're uncouth, that this, like, obsession they have with Jews is just, uh, is, is stupid and they shouldn't have it, and, but he's different because he thinks Judaism is a, a disintegrating element wherever it intervenes with a cynical intelligence, these are quotes, uh, and money thinking, um, that, uh, you know, this is gonna, you know, be damaging to society, but he's not so... Mm. crude as to suggest that yeah. any of what he just said is true. I don't know why, he, <laughs> why he's not an anti-Semite. He considers himself, I yeah. don't know, somehow above that. Uh, he has friends who are Jews. Yeah, it's probably he has some friends who are Jews. That's exactly what I think happens here. Yeah. Um, or so, he says he does. At least. Yeah. But Spangler gives Maya the idea of the Faustian ethos mm. of civilization, of, of Western civilization. Mm. And um, he also takes the word Magian or Magian from, from Spangler, which was mm. to describe Middle Eastern civilization, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and also this idea that what you will end up with, what civilizations end on, how they die, is by the creation of a Caesarian figure, this mm -hmm. this Caesar fella who will um, be so authoritarian, and everything just will fall apart, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Maya reads right up to the Caesar part, but then stops just before the fall apart part, mm -hmm. and is and it's just like what happens uh, is. The history just kind of stops then, we're in space now, and it's, it's cool, right? Mm. Uh, so that's it. That's his, like... So Mike's big contribution here to the history of civilization is, is like, the first two halves of two mm. conservative to far-right uh, historians. That's mm. about it. Right, so why space, though? Why is space the destiny? And it's because of what we will start calling, I think, as of now... Uh, Pate Matos, uh, which is this concept of uh, like empathy through struggle, essentially advancement through struggle. That you this he borrows this in some way from, from Spangler, I think as well, or maybe it was Toynbee about how uh, civilizations are responses to struggles of nature, struggles against time, whatever. So his is how do we do that? Well, space is an endless struggle in which like there is no. Uh, comfort out there. There's no end to this story that once we get out to space It's like a constant struggle to survive every day. This is the goal. This isn't like this is what he wants, right? Again, like strong Musk vibes coming in here that this is how we express the the Western advancement is through mm. this conquest You know the climb the mountain conquer Mars that kind of thing and whereas like Christianity which he sees as as essentially a, a Jewish plot more or less, uh, tells us all this other stuff um, about rejecting life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, not seeking the struggle. Uh, he's very much into Nietzsche, no? Yeah, well, I mean, mm -hmm. you mentioned he's a Nazi, right? I mean, yeah. it's not like... Well, okay, you know, a lot of... A lot of non-Nazis are into Nietzsche, yeah. not into Nietzsche, but I don't know any Nazis that would say, I don't like Nietzsche. I'm not sure what Charlie Sand thought of Nietzsche. Are you pushing? He's a kraut. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't Probably know. I probably would have liked him on that alone. I, I think, think he, yeah, he would have. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so he 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 uh, he, has, he implies that this is somehow even part of like Viking culture that somehow the Viking ship hurtling into space should be like the thing that we keep in our minds, and that's about right because I keep thinking about Klingons, and that is mostly what he's arguing here. That what is this like galactic society going to look like? It's an honor-based society built on historic, uh, I'm sorry, uh, heroic idealism. Um, you solve things mostly through dueling, space duels, so very Star Wars again, I would say. He's very uh, much into duels. He loves duels. Outside of the, the whole Galactic Imperium stuff, he's into dueling. He's out into yeah. duel. us numerous people to duel him. Yes, he's, including he's, journalists. Yeah. Well, he, he's got that big Darth energy, I think, too, in this. He's, he's not into... Uh, but it's great because when people say no, then you win. I but think. that's the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, exactly, mm. right. Um, which maybe in his mind is the 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 victory of the dark gods flowing through him and the force. These aren't the droids yeah. you're looking for, kind of thing. Maybe I don't know. I, he, this is where like he's not. 
you know, he talks about science so much, but doesn't like any of it, and so just fills in the gaps with Dark Gods stuff. Mm. So it's, it's some genre mixing that, you know, it's exciting sometimes, you know, when mm. George Lucas did it, when Adam Driver plays a space Nazi. Like, there's some stuff to like in that. But this guy, when you see it, when you see the real, when you see somebody taking it seriously as a life philosophy, as like mm. a method of history, um, you, I just become, I become the biggest angriest nerd. Mm. This genre mixing is killing me. It's like, it's magic in one moment and it's science in the next and it's just back and forth like this. Mm. But like, how does this situate historically with like Myatt? Like when, when did he come up with so this? This is the 80s. This is 84. This is early, this Vindex stuff. So by the time we get to, uh, for instance, the White Wolves, this is old. So, yeah, so by that time he was at least a member of a Nazi group since 68 when he was 18. And uh, he was a member in the 70s of Column 88, the Nazi paramilitary group connected to Gladio and the state, which supposedly disappeared in the early 80s, which is about the time when this was written. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's most of the space stuff, honestly. It, 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 you, you want more from this. Like, you want, like, some sort of sci-fi utopian vision, but I think that that's just asking way too much from all of these people. Mm -hmm. there, isn't, there isn't really a utopian end to it, and that's kind of the big point, I think, is that w what they want... And even when we get into other groups that kind of played off of Mayat, that don't involve space in any way, uh, they're still going to give you some 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 dystopian vision of endless struggle and mm. like where things don't really have to make sense anymore. And uh, yeah, but again, he uh, he, there's this kind of like weird parallel with some stuff maybe in the Dark Enlightenment today when they're trying to build the. The AI that will dominate the world, and if you don't build it, then you're, you know, guilty of not building it. And it's going to come and punish you. This is they. This is included even in 1984 here in, in Vindex, where yeah, there's a quote: uh, "There's no middle way. The destiny of the West allows no middle way. Anyone who does not fight to create the new order is, by his inaction, an agent for the destruction of the West." So it's there's not like, if you take this Vindex and Galactic Imperium stuff seriously, then you're essentially by not helping create the the world that Vindex will rise in, you are a direct enemy of this new order that will rise. New order also being, I think, what they call the new Star Wars bad guy. So how does he actually propose that we attain this kind of galactic imperium? I mean it's it's not clear to me It's from... not clear to anyone. Uh, really it's not. It, it's. I'll tell you how. He, I'll tell you how it's supposed to happen. How it's supposed to happen. Well, basically, he, he says that it's our destiny. Like, well, it's our you destiny. You get rid of Jews and Christianity, and then it happens, no? Because there's basically it's, from so. Hell. So the problem is is actually answered more in his guidebook to uh, Aryan, the complete guide to the Aryan way of life, where he tells you what an Aryan is and what an Aryan should be and why it's not currently that. And it may surprise you to learn that the Jews are at fault. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised too. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's all over that. So, so basically, how do you get ahead? How do you become this, this space-faring civilization is to build that civilization sort of in yourself through struggle and to, to like, tear yourself down, uh, or rather cleanse yourself of Magian influence, of the, of the Nazarene Magian mm. sort of, uh, whatever, wimpy society of intellectuals and people who read and write books. People sometimes who write thousands of pages yeah. on one subject, on themselves. Even. So, and people who know like ancient here, Greek. People who read like, ancient Greek, people yeah. who use translate Latin ancient words, Greek, who or, make or, up or, words, you know, like, interact uh, with themselves, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. who say things like peregrinations of David Maya. People <laughs> who say shit like that should just fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, if you're if you're on, this is it. It's all honor. It's the same shit, man. It's for, forever going to be like this with Maya. It's all honor and loyalty and duty, and uh, but it's honor, loyalty, duty, and at the same time, culling, merciless blood sacrifice. Well, we'll uh, get to that more in the yeah, yeah, that's just okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna jumping ahead jump a little ahead bit too much. Like still, this is still Maya. Like, but I mean, at the same time, this is like you know. No. 
Mm. Sometimes what? In the era of, you know, him already engaging in street fights. Presumably yeah, well, yeah, not in right. honorable this fashion. Is, right. I mean, this, is, an, uh, this is also, I uh, forgot to mention, uh, uh, this was the era where supposedly maybe he was a part of this kind of group of professional robbers and thieves together with Charlie Sargent stealing and financing the Nazi movement when he was writing this. All right, so I got you the Aryan honor code here, if that helps. All right, let's go. All right. Um, I want you to just think in your head of your favorite Star Trek Klingon saying these things. Uh, all right, so the Aryan honor code. I'm not a Trekkie, dude. I don't yeah. shit. You're not a Trekkie? No. You're a Trekkie, I know. I like Star Trek. I wouldn't say I'm a Trekkie. I don't have a favorite Klingon. All right, I think, I think those of you out there who do follow Star Trek um, mm. religiously will understand why I love uh, the Galactic Imperium as a thing. Would you imagine uh, saying this? Well, I picture, it depends on who, I, I personally picture uh, General Martok, the more honorable of the Klingon Empire. Okay. But I am often, I have to say, in my weaker moments, I think of, of General Gowron, mm -hmm. who we know multiple times betrayed the Klingon Empire, and mm -hmm. I think at one point was actually infiltrated by a shape-shifting race of aliens who were not the Jews. Okay. <laughs> in, in, the, in the show, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the Aryan Honor Code. Oaths are forever. That's number one. I think even to Charlie Sargent. Mm. Uh, you can only be released if that person agrees or if that person dies, so it seems like you can be released anytime you want, really. <laughs> <laughs> if you're really, uh, you know, if you're really serious about it. Number two is dueling and how you should do it, like, as much as possible. And it's so much so part of the Aryan way of life that the entire Aryan legal system is built on dueling. <laughs> and there's, like, you can get somebody to champion it for you, a lot of Game of Thrones kind of stuff going on here. Um, good fun. And again, like if they don't answer your dueling call, you just win. You win. Mm. You win all the honor. And that's all your honor now. Mm. And you can spend it any way you want. And uh, you have to be prepared to die by your own hand if necessary, rather than suffering the indignity of defeat or dishonor of any kind. You must treat people politely. It's very important, regardless of their culture, religion, and race. And you must treat women gallantly. So slightly differently but gallantly. Uh, you also can't boast uh, about your accomplishments, let's say in a long autobiographical um, half fiction about yourself. Um, you can't lie to anybody. Let's say you're a member of a satanic group and they ask you, are you a member of that group? Amazing. You have to say yes, obviously. He would never have lied about that. No. Uh, don't steal, don't cheat, um, and dress in a clean and discreet way like we associate with Combat 18 and yeah. well, okay. head groups. He does dress he looks yes, like he a does. clean person. I think yeah. all, all of these things, I think this is the one thing that he yeah. actually But follows. does that make him the only Aryan? Because it kind of feels Probably like not. Yeah. He might be. He yeah. might, he's an Aryan nation of one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all present society is not Aryan. That's important. Why is, why are we, why, what makes, we can talk about, we'll talk about his like claims to be an anarchist at some point later. It's not, it's nothing serious. Don't get worried. <laughs> don't start clicking through fucking the internet trying to find out what it is we'll tell you it's nothing but uh, he does make a big deal out of fighting the entirety of society um, there are moments where he sounds a bit like Nechayev maybe from way back when uh, Russian nihilists but, um, he sees himself as romantic no? I I, well no he sees national socialism as a disruption of of the present order of the Nazarene order yeah right? And thus, I mean, we'll get into that later when we talk about his Satanism, but that's why he sees it as also a, yeah. something compatible with, with Satanic thought as well. Yeah. Um, importantly in this, and I think this is really great considering their practical history, is the need to act for yourself. That the reason why uh, they're against, for instance, the death penalty is because no one should be able to bring like a sentence you know, from a th authorized by a state to mm. take your life, like the person who you've insulted should be the one that takes your life, or their family member, or somebody that they just like. So you continue, you start with this idea that we must all duel. Like, mm. might come, rightness comes from these, this trial by combat, which is said, it's called as much. And there's this whole fucking thing, like a parliamentary section of how to run a court in this Aryan hellhole, I'm sorry, utopia, that uh, they're going to create all over the galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, and a lot of it's just, what if they say no? Well, then they can be exiled. What if they say no to that? Well, 
they can get somebody else to duel for them. And eventually you start with like man on man combat, let's say, and you end up with, well, it's okay if like the friend of the, the stronger friend of the big brother of that guy fights the, you mm. know, uh, even stronger friend of that guy's mm. grandmother's dog walker. Yeah, and that's true. fine too, you know, but it's still like, as long as two people are fighting each other, yeah. it's okay. And you can do anything then, pretty much. I mean, this isn't yeah. particularly novel, though. I mean, no, it's not. It's just basically no. how dueling used to work anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. just like, this is a take from the, the 20th but yeah, but society century. wasn't based on him, so I guess he wants to base... This is the entire justice system. <laughs> All right. Uh, they don't have prisons. There's no prisons, so that's mm. nice, right? So instead of prisons, you have exile, and then you can always go and uh, beat them up and kill them if you want, as long as it's honorable. And, uh, but what it, yeah, okay. But this book, uh, Vindex, it was published in America, right? I think. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, I, I think that. it was, yeah. But some American fascist publishing. Yes, it was, actually. I, I, uh, I don't have the yeah. printed out copy here, but it was. With mm. this long forward by that fucking guy with that backwards name. Uh, Ramiro, no, what's the name? The fan name. Oh my god, he's a hilarious uh, name. Revilo Oliver. Revilo yeah, Oliver. Yeah. That's yeah, his name. Yeah, Revilo, yeah. Oliver Revilo, something like that. Yeah, Revilo, yeah. Oliver, yeah. Oh, From what group he is, is he? I forgot. The, is he the Church of Creator guy or uh, some of these American Nazi groups? Yeah. I, I can't remember. Mm. No. Um, we'll do that on the, the Nazis with backwards and forwards palindromic names episode <laughs> later. Uh, the, okay, I'm just kind of skipping through freedom based on Aryan law. Okay, okay, okay. This is a long fucking book, this uh, Guide to the Aryan Way of Life. Um, and a lot of it's just reading the same fucking three words, honor, duty, over and over and so over. So was over this again. something similar to what was found uh, at Copeland's flat? No, that was, so that's the, the, the guidebook to, uh, or the guide to Aryan Revolution. Um, Did you have something similar to that? Or? Yes, no. yeah, so, so that, that's kind of, uh, I just want to, just one thing mm. I want to leave this with, just so we know who they're fighting for. There's a really, mm. okay, so for instance, he has this long quote. Yeah, this is a quote from the book. So this is sort of setting this up. This is building uh, the ideal Aryan. Like what, if he thinks about what a, a, what a true Aryan family built on honor, built on sacrifice and loyalty and duty, what it would look like, he uses this as the example of what to strive for, for mm -hmm. a family, right? So he says, I'm reminded of the story of a young Japanese man in the Second World War. Who, I'm not going to do that fucking accent, I can't. I can't do it. I'm, sure. I can't do it. I'm reminded of the story of a young Japanese man in the Second World War who, understanding the warrior spirit of the samurai, volunteered to be a kamikaze pilot. His request was refused on the grounds that he was married with three young children and had a responsibility towards his family. Now, at this point, you might want to say to yourself, well, you just spent, David Myatt, you just spent fucking 30 pages telling me about how important family is and how family is the key to Aryan honor, how this is your primary duty is to the family, to the kin. Mm. Yeah, but that's not where this is going to go. Uh, but his wife also <laughs> understood the samurai spirit and what an honor it was for somebody to die in such a way. And so she drowned her children and then herself, <laughs> thus enabling her husband to fight and die as a hero, which he did. Yeah? So he says, fuck the state. Stick with your family, stick with your kin, unless it's Japan during the Second World War, in which case, sacrifice your family and your kin and yourself to the state. Uh, and, uh, okay, so he asks, like, who understands this spirit today? Who is moved to tears by this story because they know without words what such a deed means? Who, except we, warriors, would wish to volunteer as he did and accept as a true warrior the willing sacrifice made by his wife? The disease of decadence, the soft weakness of character it creates, is now so far advanced that the majority of even our own people, on hearing such a story, would say something like, Oh, how awful. Oh, they died in vain. So, I feel like he's talking directly to me, because that was my first thought. So, I was thinking this was like a really, like, he really cuts to the bone here, you know? Like, maybe I'm not Aryan. Yeah. Which would be a bit of a relief, because it sounds shitty. Wow. Sounds like a horrible... So drowning your kids in a bathtub is like the heroic um, destiny of the alien. Yeah, it's also a good way to make Japanese ghosts for yeah. future films. Uh, that's, there's a lot of them in bathtubs. Yeah. Quite a yeah. lot of them. A... Um, 
Yeah, so basically this is this is their version of immortality. So there is a bit there's this is a religion. It's got the elements of a religion rather, I should say. But there's no there's no good out. Your out is your your death is what makes you immortal. So there's that. That's common, mm. right? But in this case you don't actually go anywhere. There's no like, you know like it, most religions will have some nice place, you know. You you die. Okay. But, ah, you go to this luxury club forever. Mm. And this guy's like, nah, you, you drown your kids in the bathtub, mm. you kill yourself, uh, your husband kills himself, mm. and we'll just yeah. remember that, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's enough, I mean, right? no one will Which I guess if everybody yeah. does it, nobody's yeah. going to remember it anymore. But that's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm. But what honor, though? Were you moved to tears a little? <laughs> yeah. No? I thought I heard somebody give a little sniffle, a little <laughs> cry. Okay, well... I don't know. You guys are you guys are definitely been corrupted by aging so, influence, yes. by materialism. Yeah, yeah. We're not inspired by that story at all. I can't believe this. I can't mm. believe this. Uh, Speak for yourself. <laughs> so listen to this. But this is important. This is important. He. This is a quote, right? So we're talking about honor here. Remember the last episode? We mm. talked a lot about Combat Eighteen, about these hooligan gangs, etc., mm. etc. Et so. Uh, an Aryan, this is under no circumstances, this is law, this is Aryan David Maya law. An Aryan would not, for example, be part of a gang which attacks a person, regardless of the culture, way of life, religion, or race of that person, and regardless of what that person is alleged to have done, or may even actually have done. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't do that. Wait, Wait remind the... me again, uh, what did Charlie Sargent describe Combat 18 as? Yeah, he's a bunch uh, of thugs with the, <laughs> an ideology. Yeah. yeah, well, this is the ideology that the thugs are following, and it says right here that they don't do that. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Are you gonna believe the corrupt fake yeah. news Magian press, or are you gonna believe this guy who uh, told us that he's a kung fu expert, Buddhist yeah. monk, uh, Islamic jihadist, yeah. Satanist, Nazi? Which one of those sounds more realistic? Yeah, you're not part of a gang, you just drown your kids, I mean, you have yeah. ethics. Yes, yes. Um, they're, they're, they're not, they say, but that's also number one, right? Never ever do that. The other rule is never spread any rumors about somebody. Yeah. Saying, for instance, that they're an informant in the <laughs> or, I don't know. Um, no acts of cruelty to humans or animals, just so you know. Uh, yeah. So wait, you're meaning to tell me that Maya thinks that we should live on like back to nature communes as like fucking warrior farmers, but also be in space at the same time. Yeah, that's not really a contradiction. <laughs> well, how the fuck does that work? Well, if you don't get it, then you're obviously not uh, Aryan. How well, do you have like how do you have like Star Wars style like empire in like an Ewok village? I think it helps that they don't know shit about space, or science i think that helps a lot i think that's probably what our weakness our problem right now is that we understand a little about astronomy and physics and have these kind of questions well, like Maya didn't think of that at all like it didn't like at well, all cross his you're, mind you you find me a science that tells us how to live in space that isn't corrupted by magian influence really i mean like you can't trust that shit that's right it was those judeo bolsheviks that went up there first yeah do you think that when the the our ancient ancestors figured out that those were actually gods up there uh that they got that from science no mm -hmm. they figured that out on their own and it's true so yeah. there so mate, maybe it's like a state of mind like space it's just yeah like, it's oh. a state yeah you just gotta put yourself in that vindex <clears throat> state of mind you know mm. Got to treat each other like members of the Galactic Imperium. No. Uh, or you just got to watch a lot of Star Wars, because I'm pretty sure that's where he got all this from. Uh, because really, that's a fantasy story. It's not sci-fi, and it has a lot of magic in it, and pretty much everything's 84? explained by magic. 84. So then Return of the Jedi? Yeah, right? man. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, talking about these uh, communes, I uh, remember something that I wanted to say in the first episode when we were talking about Combat 18. So when uh, this uh, journalist Nick Ryan met uh, Combat 18 members and Charlie Sargent in some pubs uh, in England in 98. Um, they talked to him about their ideas and plans. So at the time they settled uh, in the uh, town of Chelmsford in um, Essex, I think. So they wanted this to be like their base for their operations. And they, were, they explained they were looking up to like... Uh, Paramilitaries, unions, but also Irish Republican paramilitaries who, yeah. have, who are like 
communally organized based in local communities and this is something that I wanted to recreate here. So they uh, thought that this town would be a part of their Aryan homeland. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, this is probably a term that David Myatt uses. I'm yeah, not sure yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. so, so this would be a part of their Aryan homeland with the paramilitary struggle taking place on the working class estates with a kibbutz style small holding um, uh, or a commune set up in the countryside. So they would have a, like a, a community, a urban community, and also a commune set up in the countryside. And uh, the, the, this homeland would also contain a, sc a school system, like independent of the state, uh, m medical doctors, and would operate on a bartering sim uh, system inst instead of using money. Uh, so uh, uh, Nick Ryan says it would function as a simpler, perhaps mythical form of community from which to attack the state and its origins. So, I mean, it's quite obvious that these are not ideas coming from Charlie Sargent. Uh, well, I don't know, it's, it's dumb enough to yes, come up with like, uh, a, a barter system which is really just like any other monetary commodity exchange mm -hmm. system except without any of the convenience. Yeah. <laughs> so it does sound like a way. Something that, yeah, yeah, it's a kind of impractical uh, capitalist system. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I guess it also kind of goes a bit of a way to explaining uh, how we get to the stars, right? It's also in a very similarly impractical... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I also just wanted system. to mention connections to this, that uh, David Mayer at least once, probably a few times, like kind of publicly, at least in the Nazi community, tried to set up a rural commune. Yeah. So uh -huh. uh, he, like, I think already in the 80s, he basically had an ad in his uh, friends Colin Jordan's Gothic Ripples uh, magazine. Please don't say that ever again. Um, yes, yeah, so, so, like, there, there was, uh, he, 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 he had an ad of, like, uh, basically asking if there are interested people in starting a Nazi commune with him. Uh, in this, like, I forgot what's the name, it's a collection of, like, small villages somewhere in England. I think he probably still lives there. Mm -hmm. um, is this the place he selected this place because of some sort of like history of like um, dark magic yeah, or yeah, yeah. something like that right yeah there. but I mean he also lies a lot so you know I mean <laughs> he, he, he has dark these, magic he has these stories like he he was like walking in the countryside and he met an old woman ah, and, the yeah. and the old woman was uh, like an, uh, she was coming from a line of ancient like Saxon witches and then you know yeah. sounds like made up Probably his like family just owned property there for like, <laughs> generations because there's some sort of yeah, landowning yeah, like British right. aristocracy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean he said uh, in one of his encounters with journals, or he wrote somewhere that he's of independent means. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so actually there is an answer to how we get to space. Can, do you mind if I just throw yeah, that in here? Too. All right. So it's it's. Uh, so basically the answer is how evolution works. So space is the destiny, it's the natural outcome of evolution, of cosmic evolution. Mm. So you don't have to actually do anything necessarily except keep the races separate. Mm. Uh, because what's happened is each race has taken on its own kind of form and, and, er, and, and the cosmic being, this is the phrase he uses, the cosmic being has made the races and that they each have their own little destiny, right? So what we're doing when we race mix is we are kind of like shitting on the plan of the cosmic being by, by taking some goals that this race might have, say for instance, serving white people, and mixing it up with goals this race might have, for instance, dominating the universe. Yeah. And if you mix all those up, you don't know what comes out. So he says that race and racial culture are the ways in which this cosmic being is manifest to us. Uh, each race expresses the essence of our humanity. It makes us human. So to preserve and to further evolve each race and its culture and to seek to allow these cultures to change is in accord with the will, the purpose of the divine creator, while to undermine or destroy this racial difference is against the will of the divine creator. So as long as you are honorable, which is you being the divine creator in your actions and keep the races separate and stop believing in the Holocaust, then the divine cosmic being will just continue to evolve you the right way. And so you will just kind of end up in space. Um, which technically we're in now, if mm. you think about it. Yes. So really, uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't know what that means. I mean, we are in space. We are in true. space, and we are, uh, you know, and are the biggest uh, proponent of that now is a fucking son of a South African apartheid emerald miner. Yeah. So I feel like we've come a long way towards that goal here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So does that answer your question? <laughs> yes. I'm going so, to say yes. So, yes. It go, is very clear yeah. to me now. I it's understand. Good. I, did, I don't know how to make it any clearer to you. Because before that. it was like, <laughs> yeah. we should stop uh, saying that the Holocaust is true. Now right. it's also stop race mixing, I think. Well, that's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, it insults the cosmic being. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean... I mean, this guy also actually he says that he studied physics. Uh, well, that's is that not clear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, our ultimate purpose and ultimate destiny lies in bringing order to the cosmos itself. Very JP, and exploring, mm. discovering, and colonizing, and thus appropriating to our consciousness the vastness of the cosmos. By doing this, by creating galactic and supragalactic civilizations, <laughs> the galaxy is not enough. Yes. Not enough. It may take you, what, uh, uh, 30,000 years at light speed to get to the middle of the galaxy, mm -hmm. but he's already 124,000 light years away yeah, to the next one. Of course. Uh, he's not only ahead of our time, he's ahead of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> what if he is time, man? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, now I think it might be actually good to bring it back to um, to the nail bomber. Yeah. So you might be asking, uh, am I implying that the London nail bomber was inspired by a Klingon poet? And the answer is yes. Uh, but through specifically a book that we mentioned, I think, uh, in the last episode called, uh, what was it called? The Guidebook to Aryan Revolution. Practical Guide Practical to Aryan Revolution. So this was Aryan a Revolution. book that was found in David Copeland's The London yeah. Name Bombers flat when he was arrested. Yes, yeah. So I, I couldn't find that book. But, and I, it's but not I've a seen surprise. a rundown which says the yeah. pamphlet included chapter titles such as Assassination, Terror Bombing, yeah. and Racial War. Yeah, well, those are the big three. Yeah. Those are yeah. the big three. So this book was allegedly written by David Mines, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, this book that I found is called A Practical Guide to the Strategy and Tactics of a Revolution, um, which I subtitled, What if Che Guevara had no experience and loved the Geneva Convention? Okay. Which I think is mostly what sums up uh, mm. this position. So... Uh, yes, because of the uniform thing, right? Oh, big deal. Yeah. It, really important. Really, really important. Um, I'm going to have us all take the oath in a second, so okay. don't worry about that. But uh, we'll be protected okay. from the whatever, who. Mm. Uh, never clear who. Um, so what I like about this book, though, which is about, like, again, terror bombing, assassination, picking the right targets, soft targets, hard targets, whatever. Also, also indiscriminate killings. Or, or uh, is it explicit here? Yeah, or? yeah, he's, uh, it's, mm. the soft targets include just, like, fucking people. So, yeah, yeah I think he's down for that. Mm. Um, but what's really cute is that this thing opens up with this weird little comment about how uh, it's now considered hate speech to tell gay people you hate them because they're gay. Mm. Like, this is, this is how it kind of opens up. Mm. They made gay bashing into hate speech. Like, mm. I'm going to go Hulk now and just kill everyone. Mm. Uh, and the, yeah, okay, we want to have our own Aryan homeland, which I, I just described what they, what they want, this, like, land of space dueling. And uh, so, yeah, so the thing is, is this is the declaration of war. Or rather, there is specifically, literally, a declaration of war uh, mm. that he does tell us how to say. Um, but he says that we're in war currently, um, mm. Aryan society is in war against all the forces trying to destroy it. He says, don't restrict your tactics. Like, he says a good general wouldn't do that, but do that honorably. So there are nothings off the table, but just so long as you, like, I don't know, sprinkle some holy water on the mm. whatever, headless corpse of the baby you just fucking mutilated mm. or whatever. There's some way to do that honorably, I'm sure. Which is what David Copeland did, I think. Uh, well, he did, he uh, said the, the nail baby right got the nail baby. in the head, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, survived. Mm. Um, thank God. Mm. Uh, don't restrict your tactics. Yeah, so he says, like, tactics can include legal parties. He's not against that, but this book's going to be about, like, active resistance, lone wolf resistance, leaderless resistance, insurrection, and all that. And again, he just keeps, after he says everything that has to do with killing somebody, he adds the word honorable to it to make sure that it's honorable, um, which I didn't know we could do. Yeah, it's a neat trick. I feel like an idiot now, having all these discussions about, like, early anarchist nihilism and mm. if it should, should be rejected, yeah, yeah. if we have to move into more mutual aid kind of stuff, but all the yeah. whole time we could have just, like, stamped the word honorable him. on it, and 
that's done. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Mr. Myatt. Uh, so, so the objections, he says, like, well, what doesn't this mean that if you start blowing people up that the government's going to come back hard on everybody and produce mm -hmm. a more authoritarian government? And he's like, yeah, boy, that's it. Like, that's what we want. That's how mm -hmm. it's going to be. And that's going to bring everybody to our side because uh, they're all going to hate how this these like whatever authoritarian globalist mm. societies are going to push especially white people into the position of being servile and and uh, all this so um it's important for him that a leader of this of a resistance group or a cell should radiate primarily love that this is important oh. just uh radiate that um yeah he also it's interesting i don't know if you wanted to mention this at all but he has some, like in his autobiographical writings, he writes how, he writes about some woman that he was his partner and he, he was very much in love with her and then she died. This is in the 2000s though, This right? is much later, yeah. 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 But how? Huh, but I think it was... Oh, there was he had two though. He had yeah, another partner. Two, died, yeah, two true. died, I think. Right. Two women died. I think one was in the early period. Was it like Joanna or something? Like yeah, I don't know. But this was like, there is even a, there is even a photograph of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, okay, so he was a man who could love. That's good yeah. to know. You know, humanizes him a little bit. Yeah. Um, but the reason why, though, you want your leaders to radiate love is uh, not just for, like, the poetic sake, mm. uh, but to... Uh, so basically, what's going to happen is the government will get its shit together and come at you, you know, with this mm. hammer. So uh, a real leader a real loving leader will rise to the occasion. And it says here, bravely like face this repression head on and change the name of their organization mm. or quit. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> so this is like the, the, the struggle of the leader's struggle is <laughs> yeah. that struggle, right? The other guys, they're blowing people up. They're doing all the assassinations, yeah. but the leader has to be like a nice guy who's willing to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When it gets hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so yeah, we're not NSM anymore. We're now rice folks. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're the. Yeah. We're not Adam Waffen now. We're the National yeah. Socialist Order. Order. Order right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So just keep doing that for the <laughs> to show how honorable and brave and courageous you are. Um, it wouldn't help to just also lie and say you were never part of that organization yeah. <laughs> and you repudiate everything they've ever done. Yeah. That's also an honorable act. Uh, so uh, he says that the future of our land and people really depends on us specifically and that we must do anything that's necessary or rather like useful and practical or efficient and practical or efficient and ruthless or uh, honorable and ruthless or whatever combination of that. That's most of his text. It's, it's like a... It's like shaking an eight ball that just has the words honorable, efficient, mm -hmm. ruthless, and duty in there. And so it just comes, comes up and he writes down a few pages about yeah. it. Uh, so you have to take a private oath. So basically, this, to join this army, there's no, there's no fucking like, oversight on any of this. And this will become a theme later when we get into the Order of Nine Angles and stuff like that. But basically, you just do it to yourself. You, you just say an oath. Mm. And uh, yeah, there was a pr printed out like you, uh, a document that you oh, can yeah, I got sign. It right here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just read it right now. Should I just read it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's hear it. You want to? Uh, it's okay. Listen, guys, I, do, I want the listeners to worry. Yes, by reading this oath of allegiance, I will be officially a member of the Aryan Liberation Army. Mm -hmm. But I, I fully intend to renounce this affiliation immediately after. Yes. Um, but by reading the this, also there is an but this, for... this show will mm -hmm. officially have. A soldier of the Aryan Liberation Army on it for at least two or three minutes. Okay, oh my God. Just, we're prepared. All right. <clears throat> um, I wish I had some good music in the background, some of this like rising cello music or something. Um, hmm. I swear on my honor that I shall do my duty as a soldier of the Aryan Liberation Army, which is to fight by any and all possible means for a free and independent Aryan homeland where my people can live according to Aryan customs and laws. I swear on my honor to be loyal to my fellow soldiers in the Aryan Liberation Army, and I swear to abide by the rules and regulations of the Aryan Liberation Army. <laughs> yeah. uh, what are those rules and regulations, you might ask? Whoa, I'm one now. How do I feel? I feel the same. Okay. I'm going to have a little, 
a little uh, whiskey here, because I feel like that's an important... Oh, you can't fucking drink. They say so you can't Wait, get what? your body... I mean, they don't say it outright, but they do talk <laughs> a lot about not being drunk. You can't be drunk. I'm not Am I drunk. a teetotaler? No, I don't know about that, but they, they just... You see this a lot in white power stuff. Like, don't take drugs, don't be a junkie, don't be a drunkard. That's it's, literally all they do. It's all they, literally all they do. So, <laughs> so I guess, uh, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to take a drink of whiskey and deny it. All right, so uh, the, the rules and regulations are really simple. One of them is that the name is the Aryan Liberation Army. That's just the name. Uh, it's, the point is to uphold the Aryan way of life, to fight whatever against people that want to stop that. The insignia, this is your uniform, is a, a Totenkopf, is the death, death's head. And that is what you, you put on the right arm. Yeah. Which one's my right? This one. And, uh, yeah, you can't see this listening now, but um, uh, Boris is right now writing a, a death's head on my arm in permanent yeah. marker. Um, and that makes your muscles soldier. are now flexing. My muscles are like kind of fucking ripped. Bigger as like, we yeah, the other arm, the left arm. Strength. The yeah. left arm where I have that, um, that uh, hammer and sickle mm. is getting smaller and smaller, and the right arm with the death's head is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so I'm glad that the this chair has that arm. So you're there. a soldier now, right? This I'm an active soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to try, try to achieve the aims of the army. Um, whatever tactics doesn't really matter. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do that by drinking right now. And mm -hmm. serving. Uh, and, and, and the other one is that I can be discharged by taking a declaration of retirement. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, those are all the regulations. There's mm -hmm. nothing more to it than that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a declaration of war. Do you guys mm -hmm. want to hear that one? Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to do a Maya impression now. Okay, all right. go for it. We of the Aryan Liberation Army hereby declare that a state of war exists between us and the Aryan, go and the Aryan government of occupation. Oh, which rules this land of our... You know, I'm not even going to fucking read this. It doesn't matter. There's a, it's a <laughs> social economic policies, blah, 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 collaborating with anti-Aryan <laughs> governments, actively encouraging, encouraging, actively encouraging, <laughs> encouraging the genocide of our noble Aryan race. Uh, so therefore, for the sake of our honor, our freedom, and our land, and our people, and our future, we commit ourselves to battle! <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that was my best Mayan impression. That's how I picture him doing it in a mirror. This kind of, like, as he touches himself. himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, so, so now I'm gonna retire. Okay. Right? Do you guys want to ask a Nazi anything while I'm here? Um, no. Any, any any questions for an Aryan Liberation Army uh, soldier? I'm gonna go ahead and say officer. Why not? I just proved yes, myself because I can. A do general. That. You're a ten I'm a general. star I'm general. A fucking ten, Aryan. Like, ten star. <laughs> Vindex is Aryan on the galactic. Maybe you can disband the, ar the army while you are general or something. Any what? Dis disband the army. Oh fuck! You're, you're right. Yeah. I should do that. Okay, cool. Well, all all you gotta do is just declare shit. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna declare the uh, Aryan Liberation Army permanently over. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and declare. That uh, the Temple of Blood is over, and that uh, the National Socialist Order is over. Mm. What else? What else we got on the list? Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, who else do we want to get off this list here? I'm not sure where my, uh, how far my, my jurisdiction is here. But since I'm, it's just basically anyone who's white, I think, falls under my jurisdiction. Right yes, now. I think it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go for, uh, uh, the, let's just do NATO. Mm. Why not? It's a bugaboo. Mm. Yeah? It's a bit like biting the hand that feeds you, but... Mm. <laughs> Very uh, much like biting the hand. Yeah. <laughs> so uh... uh, Alright, so I'm going to get out of this uh, Aryan Liberation Army now. <clears throat> okay. I hereby declare that uh, as from this date, I shall cease to be on active service and cease to be a soldier of the Aryan Liberation Army. Uh, and that sound you hear is my right arm deflating mm. back to its normal size. Uh, I'm back to being a weakling. So there was a practical reason for you uh, having a uniform, right? In a form of... Well, you can't be... Well, the thing is, is look, if I wanted to murder one of you, I had this, this strong feeling. Like if I you was... wanted to plant a nail bomb and kill a bunch of babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If while being a that. soldier, this... Uh, so basically, baby, you, yeah. you put this thing on, you, you wear the, the patch, mm. you get your Sharpie marker tattoo, mm. and if you get caught blowing mm. up all the babies, mm. um, you can demand to be treated with respect according to the Geneva Conventions because you have made a declaration of war, mm. you are enlisted in an army, uh, you're wearing a uniform. Obviously, yes. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Great. So it says here right now, a soldier is a member of an army and a person becomes a soldier when he takes an oath and an army is a structured body of soldiers. So there you go. 
Dun, dun, dun. It's just fucking logic, man. Yeah. So by having this very book in existence, you can like uh, LARP your way into the Geneva Convention. Awesome. Yeah. It would be interesting to know if Dave Copeland tried something like that. I don't get the sense. I don't get the sense that, that he, he was, read. No. <laughs> no. Very much. Or that he was necessarily like quite smart enough to yeah. do that at the moment. Because he confessed pretty much immediately, right? I mean, like yeah. they arrested him and he just yeah outright just confessed. Yeah. He's like, yeah, fucking, mm. I did it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of information about soft and hard targets. Uh, nothing that interesting, really. But it does include, soft targets include communists, anti-fascists, uh, Zionists, of course, members of things. A soft is like, uh, they're easy targets. They're, yeah, yeah, but you can, hitting police is fine with that. Hard is just when you're surrounded by, like, a professional armed group of guards and stuff like that. That's, uh, yeah, he suggests that you, you know, use the, uh, go for the sawed-off shotgun to the upper body. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try mm. to snipe these guys, you know. Um, that's it, so... Anybody wants to join, you now can. <laughs> Sorry, world. <laughs> <laughs> Just play the tape we just recorded um, while staring at yourself in the mirror and whipping mm. yourself. Um, and that should do it. And you too can become part of the yes, Alien Liberation right. Audience. That's right. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. Dr. Megala, I mean, he's the only one. So right now I want to give you guys a little thing. Okay. Uh, a little, uh, little test I made. So I was reading all this honor and... Uh, you know, doing things with honor. He talks a lot about chaos, how uh, chaos is um, the result of magian influence mixing with this folk society stuff. Like, he's anti-chaos in these right. That's important to know, is that that's yeah. probably one of the bigger differences we're going to see, is that for now, uh, he's anti-chaos in the sense that it is there for you to use to create order, fine, but overall... Mm -hmm. Uh, the world is now moving to chaos and we have to bring back the order. This is why you have all these things like new order, yeah, order yeah. this, order that. Does he say that chaos is feminine or something like this? Um, y y I think that comes later. That's more mm. of when you get into this like Runewitha being close to earth, like mm. away from the books kind of stuff uh, in the O and A. So what I wanted to do is, uh, is give you guys a little test to see if you could distinguish whether or not Jordan Peterson, the, the eminent, highly respected psycho path from Canada, uh, or is it David Myatt, the philosopher king of the New Minus Way? Uh, so okay. both very respectable gentlemen here. Um, All right. You have a buzzer? Can we, uh... Yeah, you got a buzzer. You're, uh, just, uh, yeah, just buzz it in. Just buzz in. Mm. Buzz in when you know. All right, so I'm going to read you, uh, we're going to do it like this. I'm going to read you one quote, and then at the end I'm going to read you a pair of quotes that you have to do. Okay, so first, uh, tell me, is this Jordan Peterson, or is this David Myatt? Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to read them all in a Jordan Peterson voice. <laughs> okay, all right. Just to make it a little harder. Say only those things that make you strong. Do only those things that you could speak of with honor. <laughs> Myatt, I would say Myatt. David Myatt, Myatt. David Myatt. Myatt. You guys are both wrong. It's Jordan fucking Peterson. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. The man who is not a Nazi. <laughs> All right. You ready for another one? Ready for another one? Okay. This requires us to quest for excellence, to struggle for order, to fight against chaos. I guess... I don't know, Peterson. That could be Peterson. Yeah. Peterson? Yeah. That's, That's David Mayan. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> Let me read you the Peterson quote that it pairs with. Peterson wrote, uh, this is an actual Peterson one. It means deciding to voluntarily transform the chaos of potential into the realities of habitable order. <laughs> Alright. Alright, a couple more, a couple more, a couple more, a couple more. Um, okay. Alright. The meaning or the purpose of old religions, like civilizations our ancestors created, is that they have led us to the understanding of the present. <laughs> I don't know. That's Peterson, that's Peterson. Yeah, that's I think so, Peterson. It's yeah. actually David fucking Maya. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have gotten none of these right. All right, this one you'll get for sure. This one you'll get for sure. <clears throat> okay. The individuality of Western civilization is under threat from collectivist ideologies. It is therefore exceptionally important to pursue individuality as a Western virtue. 
Peterson. Peterson. That's yeah, it. it. Peterson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, right. All right. So the last question. Last one. I'm well, mine never talks about collectivism. You're right. He right. never say collectivism. Yeah. He'll say yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he'll straight up say Nazarene. communist. Nazarene. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Materialist. Something yeah. like this. Um, but he also talks something. About, uh, he also mentions something like cultural Marxism. Oh yeah, yeah. He, crypto, he, crypto yeah. Marxism yeah, and uh, Marxism. taking over culture and stuff like this, yeah. of which like anthropology is a part of, mm. of which um, like both capitalism and socialism are both part of the same materialist. Yeah, system. everything. Rock and roll, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's all fucking causal, man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get into the a causal. Uh, mm. All right, last one. I'll read you both now. One of them is going to be Jordan Peterson. One of them, David Maya. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do it in that voice because I can't. It really hurts. I'll do it. It's better. Like, it really, honestly, I think it'll <laughs> it'll cause permanent damage. Okay. Um, you right. gotta sacrifice yourself. Yeah. Okay? You know what the problem is? You like can't. The Japanese children. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. You know what? For the sake of the honor code, <clears throat> I will do it. Uh, I'm gonna drown my vocal children and stand up here. Um, uh, all right. Last one. <clears throat> David Meyer or Jordan Peterson. I'm gonna read both. Number one. In everything that I do or undertake, I shall strive for excellence. Now, number two. Every moment in search of excellence is a moment well spent. <laughs> the second one is mine. The first one is Peterson. Um, do you concur? I do, I do. I th I well, do. you guys are both fucking terrible at this game. <laughs> yeah, dude, you fucked this up. I only got one right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's not, that's not true. It's the reverse. Yeah. Well, it's not a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Jordan Peterson, I just want to—I just want to say this again: not a Nazi. <laughs> yes, of course. In case it might be confusing, why he sounds exactly like a Nazi Satanist, he's yes. not that. He's of course. A Look, mate, you're taking out of context. No. Right? Yeah, I took it out. Of, yeah, yeah, I did though. <laughs> That's fair. I did. I took it out of context and put it in a way more fun one. You're welcome, Mr. Peterson. All right. So I guess. Uh, that more or less wraps up this one. Um, let's uh, maybe give a sneak preview. Yeah, we'll be coming episode. back with some more more serious content uh, in that yeah. we'll be delving into um, some of the more interesting shit about Mayat's uh, Satanism. Um, yeah. Yeah, you guys like, uh, you like the Dark Lord? Scale of one to ten? Nine and a half there. Yeah, for me it's a, it's a, it's a three, three, three. I like Sauron. You like Sauron? You're gonna, you're gonna love this shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright. So we'll see you next time. Later.